Okay, well, um, uh, so what's, first of all, I'm not a standard academic. Um, I started out in my, my career early on as an electrician and then became a technician. And eventually I did an engineering degree, uh, and, which means I'm, I'm very much a hands-on person. I'm, I'm interested in projects. Um, and I bring this this engineering and, and building background to, to a lot of my, my projects because I, I like to build things. And after years of working in companies that you mentioned there, like like um, Electric Ireland, the Ericsson's and Siemens Nixdorf, Software Systems Engineering Limited, I started lecturing in computer science in, in, in Dublin. So going from an electronic engineering degree, which specialized in computer engineering, to to uh, to teaching uh, in, in, that, in that area. Um, and I've been in Dublin City University for over 23 years now at this stage. Um, I've been working in emerging technology research projects in, in those areas, to, uh, like the emerging tech areas like AI and IoT and data and data governance, etc. Focusing mainly on interoperability challenges and, and, and standardization. Uh, and that's across multiple you know, Science Foundation Ireland funded research initiatives like the ADAPT Research Centre and Insight Research Centre and more recently the, the Empower, Empower Data Governance um, uh, Research Hub. Uh, actually, we've alluded to it uh, in the other questions anyway um, already, but but I, I as I said, my area of, of, of expertise and, and for most of my research projects now are on standardization and interoperability. And I'm interested in trying to get businesses to grow on a global scale. So as I said, don't think local, think global. Uh, and if you're doing global, uh, if you're thinking global in relation to AI and data, data technologies, that means international standardization, which is you know, the best prog products uh, and the best practices for producing those products and technologies and tools and services. And if you want to do that uh, with interoperability as your as your core mantra, then you look, have to look at standardized terms and definitions when dealing with your customers, the, the best use cases to use, uh, which are in relation to the, te your, the technology area that you're working in. You know, reference architectures, for example, like, you know, can give you guidance on how to build your products. So what I'm doing is pre effectively presenting the state of the art in AI and data standardization, not just at EU level, but at the international level. So hopefully it'll be something that would be um, informative and, and interesting uh, to the uh, attendees at the conference. Yeah, in terms of you know what's sort of top on, on people's radar at the moment is particularly within Europe, um, is the European Parliament is coming out with data governance acts and AI acts and there's new standardization strategies um, and all of these are AI or data centric and uh, and so anyone that's involved in you know the data science fields you know or the AI slash uh, data fields uh, are going to have to be cognizant of those uh, of those regulations and and secondly a, there's there's a proliferation of, of new platforms and, and, and data sharing uh, 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 ecosystems that are evolving. And I, and I think that if you were to pick one word that should be high on the agenda for, for businesses, it's trust. That trust is becoming more and more important now in, in for, for, for trying to do business in, in what's become a, a fast changing uh, ecosystem in, in relation to AI and data technologies. You need to be aware of transparency and open openness in, in relation to your platform to be, be very uh, customer or people centric in your systems and to, to, to develop trustworthy applications so you have this provability you know that and, and uh, uh, reproducibility robustness built into your systems so that your customers and your employees actually within your own organization um, have that level of trust in in their um, in the technologies that they're, they're not just developing but also in, in that they're using on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so when building those type of systems, and uh, particularly which is which is very data oriented. Okay, I mean the analytics really to get any sort of knowledge or, or semantic meaning out of it, you want to have the analytics. But just in terms of the data, most people will start focusing in on mistakes around you know collection of data or aggregation of data, data warehousing, you know, various types of data storage, you know, um, and issues are, uh, associated with that. Uh, but for me, the the biggest I think limiting 
mistake that, that will be made in relation to most projects which are AI or data centric is thinking small. So I think thinking small is a big mistake. Um, I often say to companies like, you know, what do, what do you do for your customers' employees uh, at the moment? And what would you do if you had unlimited resources? So if there was no financial restrictions, you know, or resource restrictions on what you can do, what would you do in terms of, of um, uh, improving your business? And now, what can you do within reason? You know, so based on the limitations that are that are posed, external factors that are imposed in your business, what can you do uh, for your customers? And how can it be done on a global scale? So don't think small, don't think local, think global all the time. And in, in with relation to that, you know, thinking globally, if you if you want to sell into international markets or if you want to interact with other technological systems and platforms, etc., how can you guarantee interoperability with existing technologies? And that's one of my key areas of focus, which will be interoperability and standardization. So I think thinking small is a mistake. Try and think big, think global, think international, think standardized uh, approaches. question yeah absolutely i mean the new normal means that like we had got used to remote working uh, a, a lot of a lot of um i suppose what used to be face-to-face -face interactions like it are, are now happening very, very much like what we're doing now through 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 mediums like zoom and webex etc but i think one of the most important things for for a company starting out to if they haven't already begun their, their digital transformation process would be to to understand their data i think that's the, the key takeaway that that they need to know in terms of uh, getting prepared for digital transformation and actually evolving and and, and uh, updating their their digital transformation process as, as it evolves. Um, so you get to know your own data, you know, understand it, you know, so your business data, your your customers data, uh, your uh, your employee data, you know, what data do you have on all of these topics? What do you do with it? You know, uh, what do you want to do with it? And what could you do with it? So these are these are things that you, you would need to look at um, uh, it, it, to, to get a good grasp of what of, of what's available to you at the moment, and, and and oftentimes, like you know, you want to you you would want to be saying, uh, I'd often say to to, to uh, customers like you know, if you had uh, uh, if you had uh, unlimited resources, like you know, then you know, what would you do with those resources in terms of how could you make better choices with, with the data that you have access to at the moment and what different types of data, what the different modalities uh, of data you would like to get from your business, you know, from your, your, your employees, um, uh, 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 from your customers uh, so that you can improve your, your business re revenues.